Alright, welcome back everybody, my name is Nick from Silent Snow, and today we're going to be talking about the latent sync comfy UI nodes, as well as how we can kind of solve the blurry result issue that we get when using high res inputs. I know this looks scary, I promise it's not that scary. Right out of the gate, one thing I will say is that this was all run on a 3060 Ti, so 8GB of VRAM. I did have a couple of <laughs> crashes, but I don't think it's the workflow's fault, um, truthfully it think it's more on me than anything. The key prerequisites here, if you have latent sync installed, great. If you don't, go ahead and look in the link in the description. You'll find a link to our Patreon and in that link, um, you will find a link to the GitHub where you'll find instructions on how to install the um, latent sync nodes for Comfy UI, as well as this workflow that we're about to go over right now. So have latent sync installed, have Comfy UI updated, and have eight gigabytes of VRAM, or if you don't have that, but are able to run Stable Diffusion 1.5 models, then you should be good to go. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm gonna walk you through step by step because I do think that this workflow can be improved and odds are if you're watching this, you likely know what you're talking about. Uh, you're probably one smart cookie. So definitely want to walk through this so you guys are aware of what can be changed and maybe if you are an expert out there, maybe what can be improved to kind of make this go a little bit quicker. On some occasions, I've gotten this entire workflow done in like 20 25 minutes in terms of running it through all the way in other occasions it's taken over an hour uh, again largely to do with kind of what i'm doing on my system but just something to keep in mind that i'm definitely looking for any thoughts here but essentially it's kind of all very streamlined all in one so when we talk about latent sync and getting your base output this is really all you need to run latent sync and get even a result and so the result you're gonna get is something like what you'll see on screen right now so again looks pretty good the lip sync is clearly there however it is a little bit blurry just keep that in mind that's the issue that we're trying to solve but if you just want latent sync all you need are these four nodes if you install the comfy ui nodes package from the github link on our patreon then you should be good to go and then if you look inside of your custom nodes folder for that latent sync wrapper folder you'll find a workflow in there and that workflow is going to contain just these four nodes or you can literally just look at this and copy it so all you'll do is you'll put in your audio so in this particular case we just have this small little sample here hey it's Jonathan, this is Fiction, episode two is out, go take a watch. So pretty simple, um, this is AI generated and obviously so is this down here, really good result from Kling. And so we're basically going to take this audio file and lip sync it. So first things first, we run that, get our base generation, which again, we just saw. And unfortunately I don't have it here, but I'll put it on screen. What we're going to do next is basically mask our subject frame by frame, just so we can kind of cut it out. But also one thing we're going to do is actually upscale each frame of our latent sync output right out of the gate. The reason being is because we're using this kind of latent data for our new video that we're going to generate using Stable Diffusion 1.5. And so we're upscaling it to try and get a little bit higher resolution fed into our generation so that our output is already going to have a decent amount of detail. Although one thing you want to be careful for, obviously you can up, up this to whatever you want, especially if you have a pretty powerful setup, but just be careful that you might run into some out of memory issues if you're trying to generate, for example, like a 4K image for every single frame. You can also adjust what you're picking out. I mean, I would leave this alone, definitely wouldn't touch this, but I'm just letting you know the option is there. And if for whatever reason, uh, it's not picking up the person in your, um, video you can mess around with the confidence to to adjust its field of view so to speak so obviously confidence the higher you go the more picky it's going to be it's going to pick out the things that it's fully confident about and the lower you are the more broad it is so i found that point one is typically pretty good for me but again you can mess around with this so it'll do that for every single frame and then we're going to pass that to our stable diffusion 1.5 section and so this actually comes straight out of the previous video that I did talking about skin refining workflow. This is pretty lightweight. 
um, definitely I would go take a look at that if you are also having some sort of AI skin problems. I actually ran that AI skin workflow before passing this to Kling and we can see that it kept a lot of those details. So definitely something to check out, but this literally comes straight out of there. One thing to keep in mind is that if you have a particular setup that you use, for example, to generate like realistic pictures, um, or very high definition detailed pictures, whether that's with Stable Diffusion 1.5, Flux, High Dream, or I think there's some new model out now that I haven't even tested yet. If it's any of those, you're more than welcome to swap it in as long as you're ensuring that the logic stays the same. So you need to be passing these images uh, as kind of the starting point, so to speak. So once you've got the setup, it's going to generate a new picture for every single frame. We've got 40 steps, and the key thing to remember here is to use a low denoise strength. You can also mess with this, but the higher you go, for example, if you set it to one, your final result is gonna look pretty awful um, because it's changing the mouth every single time. And you, even at such a low denoise, will still see some jittering here, but I've elected to keep it in uh, just because it makes the most sense for me. I mean, I think another way that you could go about this too is rather than having a frame by frame regeneration of the entire face, you could segment just the mouth and do just the mouth. Or another way to go about it is to actually go video to video and integrate that here. Unfortunately, local video to video capabilities don't really work on my hardware at the moment, but it's something I've definitely considered and would be interesting in hearing how that goes for anyone who tries to plug that in here. But I digress. Once that's done, we um, upscale every single one of those frames one more time by four because we want to try and get as much detail from the face and from the lips as possible from these new generated pictures. And the reason why we did this in the first place, um, you could technically cut this out entirely and just segment the mouth right away and upscale. And the reason I did this, I think the problem with latent sync beyond just the blur is how it's composited onto the face. So the goal here is to get something that's a little bit more integrated based basically, and generated flush with the photo rather than pasted back on. So once those images are done, we're basically going to review and parse the face again, but this time we're looking specifically for the mouth, upper lip, and lower lip. Again, that's every single frame. Then we move on to actually isolating the mouth and masking it out. And so this is basically what we get out of our update. So these are also some factors that you can play with. It's basically kind of like the feather slider to some extent and after effects when you're masking things. So this you can definitely mess around with and this will kind of help blend the mouth with the rest of your generation. Um, I don't have like a, unfortunately a side by side. I think that's something that somebody could add in if they wanted to, or maybe I can with enough uh, kind of upvotes on that, so to speak. But this is basically what we get. It definitely looks a little bit weird in this previewer because it's actually basically stabilizing around the mouth. And one thing too that I wanted to comment on and why I say I think there's more that can be done to the workflow is that we're not really bringing detail back, so to speak. I think this this does make a difference when you compare it side by side, for example, that's what we can look at here. But at the end of the day, it is it is a marginal difference, but I think it's enough to make a difference. Um, so on the far left, we have the original latent sync generation. In the middle, we have the output we got from generating every single frame, frame by frame. And you can kind of see the impact of denoise, especially in the hair there on the top left. And, and that's what will happen. So if you set denoise to zero, you're not going to get any of that because it's not going to generate anything new. If you set it to 0.1, you're going to get a very low jitter, um, very similar to what we see there. And if you set it to one, it's going to be absolutely insane. So don't do that. But you can see we've, we've really fixed the blur between the first and the second generation. And when we composite it back on, it definitely looks a lot more natural, a lot more ingrained, um, and just a lot less blurry or kind of artifacty. So again, at the end of the day, I think that this still could be improved. It's something I want to offer up to you guys and would love to see how people improve it. Um, obviously, organization is up to you. I just wanted to separate it in chunks so everything makes sense and it's easy to comprehend. But really, um, this is kind of your big area of focus. Um, 
kind of different combinations here of different LoRa's, different models, Flux, Stable Diffusion 1, XL. Um, I think that's really what's going to make the key difference here along with what upscaling models you're using. So um, I haven't tested it beyond kind of the settings that are in here. Uh, it's just more of a proof of concepts to show that it, it, it can be done, um, but would love to hear the community's thoughts on this. So that's about it for today, guys. If you like what you heard, please consider subscribing, leaving a like, leaving a comment, anything helps. If you're looking for the workflow, please find our Patreon link in the description. The workflow is free. We also have um, a different workflow, the one that I mentioned earlier about the skin refinement in there as well for you to take a look at. And I'm hoping to bring some additional cool stuff in the kind of coming weeks and months here. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later.